What's up, chefs, foodies, and students? Welcome to Everybody Knows. I'm Anders, I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. Today, we are talking about how we explore and experiment with food aromas, specifically best methods for smelling or tasting foods. You gonna tell me how to smell something? What's next, you gonna tell me how to blink my eyes? I know, sounds crazy or pandering or condescending, I get it. However, there are a few things to keep in mind as we nerd out about food aromas and how to better know them, so let's get into it. First step is to prepare yourself and your environment. This means to try and get rid of any other aromas that might be impacting you while you're actually trying to smell. Perfume, cologne, toothpaste, gum, whatever you just ate, the cookies baking in the oven, a nearby fish tank, a campfire, the fart your dog just nuked the room with, any aromas that you can identify from you or your environment can interfere with a good smelling. Alternatively, and this might be for a business person developing a product, you might prepare your environment by ensuring that smells are actually present. If your product will always be served from an aluminum can, then you may want to always sample or smell it from an aluminum can so that you create an authentic context for the aromas that your customers will ultimately experience. Okay, here we go, a smelling. Don't be shy, you gotta get that nose up in there. Don't worry about what it looks like, you're focused on the smell. The first way we can smell is called orthonasal smelling or breathing, which is just to take a whiff of something with your nose. This gives you a good initial aroma profile for many substances. Strong aromas like onions can almost entirely be smelled just in this way. So let's give a smell. I have some kombucha here. Hmm. There you go. Orthonasal breathing. The next way you can smell is called retronasal breathing or smelling, which is to introduce the aroma from inside your mouth and out through your nose. This is important to do whenever possible because as a food product interacts with your saliva and gets fractured by chewing, even more aromas are released and they can only be detected using this technique. There is also an aeration technique for liquids that is used for the same purpose, but also to pull air through the liquid in order to aerosolize more compounds to be smelled, which we will get to momentarily. Now that we've done a little bit of smelling, we're going into some tasting. So depending on what you're eating, this might look different, but in general, here's what we'll do. The first taste doesn't fully count, especially with liquids. You have a little bit of liquid, swish around a little bit, and then another little bit. And as you chew your food or swish, allow the air in your mouth to exit through your nose, taking note of the aroma and how it might even change as you eat it. And that technique I mentioned earlier is where you hold liquid in your mouth and then you sip air through the liquid like you're sipping through a straw and it sounds like this. Not great for people who don't like that sound, I'm sorry. But that pulls so much air through the liquid and creates this cloud of aroma that can then come back in through your nose and you get a whole whiff. Another thing that you can try, and it's weird, it's not like formal dinner behavior, um, but it's where you open and close your jaw while keeping your lips closed, and this sort of pumps air in and out of your mouth, and then you kind of like let it push up into your nose. So your mouth is like a little bellows pushing air into your nose, um, and that gives you a whole bunch of aroma in the same way um, and sometimes it makes a funny sound and children sometimes like stumble upon this and they make this weird noise when they eat something that they like and it's really funny. Um, I'll do it quietly and then I'll do it uh, with the noise. I don't actually need food to do. Um, so you, you just do this. You can hear a little bit of air passing through my sinuses, that, that sound. And when the kids do it and it makes noise, it sounds like this. and it's just them moving air through their mouth and nose. As the Aroma Wheel project is all about language, a quick note on language. 
when you smell a food product, you might hear some of these terms. We might say upfront to describe what we smell first or foremost. Bouquet is often used to describe just the aroma or smell of a food or a beverage. Note or notes is a word that we use to describe parts of an aroma that we can identify. Body could be describing the main theme or part of an aroma. Finish is usually the like last or trailing parts of an aroma, uh, what we notice maybe on the end. And then aftertaste is what might actually remain after the food is long gone. If you're interested in more food aroma exploration, have a look at the rest of this playlist. Otherwise, that about wraps it up. What I would like you to do is think about what we talked about here today and some of these methods. I want to know, do you agree or disagree? Why or why not? Do you have any ideas or questions? Any of the answers to those questions, please throw them in the comments. I would love to read the feedback. I hope this video made sense and gave you some useful tools for smelling and tasting some more cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like to join the Food Aroma Nerdery, go ahead and subscribe and you'll see all my latest vids. If you would like a hard copy poster or a digital copy of the Aroma Wheel that I have created, there will be links in the description. Thanks so much. Bye.